It is time to go on the docket with attorney John Patrick Dolan as he breaks down all your legal news. John, welcome back. Happy New Year to Happy you. Happy New Year to you guys. Well, why don't we start by talking about Doris Payne. She's a self-proclaimed jewelry thief. So what's the latest with her case? Well, last Friday it was set for a bail hearing, what they call 1275 Penal Code section. And what that is, is if you're going to put up bail, you have to show the court and the, the prosecution where you got the money for the collateral and where you got the money for the bail premium. That was scheduled for Friday. Neither her lawyers nor any documents showed up on Friday, so no hearing took place. She's scheduled for what they call a trial readiness conference on February 3rd. That's probably the next date back in court. The inference is probably, given the fact that she listed her employment as jewel thief, that they were going to have a little difficulty living up to the standards of Penal Code Section 1275, even though it's only a $65,000 bail. So she'll be back February 3rd, and they will start scheduling a, a trial for this case. And maybe in the interim, the lawyers will find uh, an explanation for how bail could be posted. I understand her daughter might put her house up, and so then the question is, where did you get the money to put up the $6,500 bail premium? And so far, not a good answer. Is it common for uh, lawyers and even the uh, plaintiff to not show up? Well, y what they do is they set the date, but then you have to file certain documents in order for the date to be a valid date for an appearance. And so they set the date, but then they never filed the document. So it is common sometimes to set a bail hearing, but then not go forward with the bail hearing. On the other hand, usually you let people know ahead of time, and so who hmm. knows? These lawyers are from outside the area, and who knows? Maybe the practice is slightly different in San Diego than it is here in Riverside. Now, apparently the judge got mad when she wrote jewel thief there on her application. Could that actually affect her? Well, I don't know that the judge got mad. He certainly got amused uh, because uh, she, I guess, was being a little bit sarcastic. Uh, and, of course, that doesn't help her when she's trying to post bail, so it might have been a little joke that backfired. All right, let's move on to our next topic, which is Utah marriage. What's happening here? Well, here, the state has a statute against same-sex marriage. So some people who support same-sex marriage went into the federal district court in Utah and said, hey, this is unconstitutional. The judge in the federal district court said, you're right, this is wrong, and people should be able to marry. And so people began to marry. The state then appealed this to what they call the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, the next level up for the federal district court. Apparently the Tenth Circuit wouldn't give them a stay, and so people continued to get married. So then the state went to the Supreme Court of the United States and said, hey, until we litigate this, let's just put a stop to this. And the Supreme Court said, yes, let's take this slowly. No more same-sex marriage in Utah. And so Utah same-sex couples are in the same place that many Californians were, remember, a couple of yeah, years ago right. when mm -hmm. they got married, and then they said, no, you couldn't get married. Uh, supposedly, uh, full faith and credit is recognized for the, the legal marriages that have taken place, but everybody in Utah is going to have to wait now. And the indication from the Supreme Court is they're not quite ready yet to make a nationwide decision about same-sex marriage, although it's coming. Yeah. Because whoever doesn't win in the Tenth Circuit is going to be in the Supreme Court. Probably it'll take till about 2015 to get there. Wow. Thank you for joining us, John. Indeed. We'll stay updated on those cases and all the other ones that we're following here at KMIR News.